All right, this is relative charts, quick and dirty. I don't talk about relative charts in my book, uh, Hayden's Book of Synastry. I talk about it in Alma Mater. Um, let's say that you want to know just the real. You want to know the truth about yourself and this other person or this other event, this business or whatever. And you just want to say, look, I don't have a lot of time to lollygag. I just started working with this other thing, this whatever. Um, how can I know quickly, astrologically, what to expect from my relationship with them? Give me the real. If you're ready for the real, then you'll do it this way. Okay. To make a relative chart, let's say that you have the program Starfisher. I don't know how you do it in your program, but I use Starfisher. And I've got two charts, chart one and chart two. I come into the events and I go to combine events. And it gives me some options for whatever charts I have open or loaded. For this one, I'm going to click chart one and click chart two. Okay, it's got this combined thing. I click OK. And yes, I want to make a new chart. Okay, chart one and chart two standard. Booyah. Another way you can do it is to come here. You can choose the horoscope type as relative. And you can do a chart one here and go to event, chart two here, and it's going to give you the same thing. Now, I'm not going to select this one because I actually like the idea that it gave me the merge, the average birthday and birth time for these two charts. I'm going to want asteroids from that. But as far as the quick and dirty goes, when you're reading a relative chart, I, by the way, I tell you all about how to do this in alma mater. Like there's a whole section on this very thing that we're talking about now. You want to look at six points and really, I'm not going to say only six points, but relative charts are so dependent on proper birth times. If you don't have proper birth times, don't even bother doing this kind of chart. Um, you might just go with basic synastry and ignore ascendant midheaven and all of that. Because when you're reading a relative chart, you want to know about those axes. Those are the, those are the things that count the most. The ascendant is how the relationship goes forward. The descendant is how the relationship uh, responds to things that happen in it. The midheaven is how the relationship looks in public. And the, uh, the imam coli is what's happening when the relationship is not being seen in public. Additionally, the part of fortune is kind of like the background of the relationship. It's basically how... Um, it's, it's, it's kind of like the ambient environment. When you've got things in the background on the ambient environment, um, like, like uh, major asteroids, planets, things like that, that's kind of like the, the background music to the relationship. And the vertex is very cool, very interesting to look at. The vertex is kind of the reason that the relationship came together in the first place. These are just random charts from dates, just dates that I just pulled out of nowhere. So this doesn't reflect anybody. But if I wanted to know the quick and dirty about this chart, the one of the first things you want to look at for a relationship that is meaningful in a regular chart, re a relative chart, is whether there is anything on the axes. Look, this ascendant doesn't have anything major on the axes. These, these two random dates, pretend they're people. They don't have anything really invested in how they go forward together in the world. Eh, whatever. Um, they're seen as maybe talking to each other. They're, they're seen by how they communicate with each other. So the public notes them when maybe they're, they're talking because they've got Venus up there. Um, it's not that sharp, but whatever. It's okay. It's within five-ish degrees. Um, when we work with duodecanates and we do like astro hacking and stuff, five degrees is real, real wide. And this wouldn't, this wouldn't, this wouldn't cut it. Uh, we're looking for something like 2.5 degrees, two, two, two ish degrees. Anyway, same thing here. This Neptune, you could say, well, the relationship chart, um, when it's, when these two random dates are not being seen together, they've got an ambient feeling. Again, that Neptune is way too far away. I wouldn't, I wouldn't count it myself. But if you're just, you're just kind of looking for planets on these asteroids, you might say Venus is there. I wouldn't bother with Neptune. Over here, ooh, look at this. These two dates, 
when something happens to them or in their relationship as a result of each other, maybe, they respond with their Mars. It could be influence. It could be aggression. It could be defense. It could be action. It could be anything that is Mars related. You'll have to look around. You also see that they respond with Hera. So maybe there's a little bit of solidarity there. In a relative chart, oh, okay, and, and lastly, they've got arrows for what they're passionate about. So if these were two people or a person in a business or whatever, they would come together mainly to play out the passion. Indeed, we've got Mars here. And so the element of a passionate response, an intense response, um, is going to be a theme in this kind of relationship. They've got Celine there, so maybe they want to use their blessed talent as kind of a background music. It, it's, it's kind of tricky to interpret this because it, they're not real people, and I'm just kind of pulling things from nowhere. Um, but that's how you would look at it. Is this relationship positive or negative? Well, I don't know if you can say positive or negative. In a relative chart, the, 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 the bad thing about relative charts is that they tell you, they, they give it to you straight. And if you're looking for certain things, like if I wanted this to be a romantic relationship, it's pretty much a fail, pretty much. Um, if I wanted this to be a work relationship, probably a fail there too. Why? Well, because if you want to look for friendships and like close emotional support, you're looking for three kinds of things typically on the axes. Juno, the asteroid of commitment. Hera the asteroid of deep bonds, and Bacchus, the asteroid of friends who'll never leave you. Bacchus is really strong, really weird in relative charts because as friends will never leave you, these are the people who you thought they were out of your life, but you, you can't quite get them out. They, they keep coming back. You keep coming back. Y'all keep coming back together. If that happens, you probably have Bacchus on one of these axes, on the Ascendant, on the Midheaven, on the Imokoli, or whatever. So, Anyway, um, when I look at a relative chart to see, okay, give it to me straight. Is this relationship meaningful? The first thing I look at are the axes. It's not meaningful in how we go together. It may be meaningful in that we're seen talking, whatever. Um, if you value that, then that's cool. Um, if you like, if you wanted to host a public forum or something like that with your, your co-host, this would be cool having Venus up there. It does not mean you're bonded. It means you talk to each other. But that could be a counselor thing as well. I look at uh, the descendant to see how we respond. Interesting. When you have in more charts of friends, just straight up friends, I have seen Juno on the ascendant, right? Um, in more charts of marriage partners, I tend to see Juno on the midheaven. These people, marriage partners, look publicly committed. Friends who go out together for funsies go out into new things publicly committed. Does that make sense? You would think that having Juno, the asteroid of commitment, on the descendant is positive. It might be. Um, I've actually seen it in relationships where uh, the, the, the pair is hit with something and they respond with solidarity. Uh, when things are well, when things are not well, they they want to double down on their commitment. And it's often painful because they're they're fighting to stay together, but um, they only really stay together when something hits them. Right. So Juno on the descendant may not be um, as positive as all that. The strongest of these six points Ascendant, Descendant, Midheaven, Imum Coli, Vertex, and Part of Fortune is the Imum Coli by far. At least this is what I've seen. Because the Imum Coli is what your relationship is like when you're not going out, when you're not being seen in public, and you're not being hit by anything. You're not even paying attention to the background of the relationship or the reason they come together. You have an irregular day. And stuff down here tends to define the relationship. There are some things that you don't want to see in your chart. Just like you want Juno and Hera and Bacchus on these axes, you don't want to see things like Janina, the asteroid of being passed by, or uh, Liberatrix. Oh my God, I see Liberatrix a lot, the asteroid there. Um, I've seen it 
on the bottom, which means you are constantly separating. It's the asteroid of getting separated, um, rifting. And so these are flaky relationships. They come in, they go out, and you want to rely on them. You, you can't. Um, so anyway, this is, this is kind of the quick glance at these. Now, it, that doesn't mean the relationship is a lost cause. Sometimes you get into a, uh, an exchange with someone or something for reasons that don't have anything to do with the majors. They have to do with specifics. So what we could tell so far is that there was nothing going on really um, in this relationship except for that these two people might be seen as talking to each other and they respond with action when something hits their pair. But, yeah, and there's a little bit of, a, of a passion there, kind of. But it's passionate action. It, it certainly doesn't seem like passionate friendship because Juno is way out here. It's not on any axis. And uh, Bacchus is way out here. It's not, it's not on anything. And, well, Hera, oh, they're bonded. So they, they, accent, they, they may absolutely have to do things together. They're like, oh, we got hit. Well, let's come together, right? Because they're bonded when something happens to them, the descended. And they have action there. Okay, I know that's repetitive. I know that's repetitive. But the quick and dirty facts means that in about six minutes, we, we get the idea of this relationship. The way I've described it, do you want to stay in this relationship? Depends on what you came for. Um, but that's the rough version of it. Uh, if you, you decided that you two were a bunch of sentries or a pair of guards standing guard at the front of a castle, this is a great relationship because y'all y'all can cut up while people are, are passing by. But when something hits you, you can work as a, a team, a pair to get the action done. Not not so favorable for uh, for uh, other kinds of relationships. There's another there's another way of looking at relative charts, and it is the reason why I have these other screens up. And you may actually find this useful for general research. See this chart? It's got the merge. It's got the merge birth date and birth time. I know what the relationship doesn't do, but I don't know what it does do. How do we go out forward? It would be nice to know what asteroids are on the ascendant. What do we do when we're not being seen publicly? It'd be nice to know what was down here on the Imum Coli. Neptune's too far away. Here's what we'll do. We are going to go over to siranu.com and put in this birth time. So it looks like we're working with 8.38 a.m. 8.38 and 19.88. And let's see what time is it. It is, oh, that's, I'm, I don't, I'm all messed up. Eight, and this is the 28. Forgot that it does it that way. And it is 8.38 a.m. We want degrees of Zodiac 360 sort, tropical. I put in some of my favorite asteroids there. And where is this? This is 51 North 30 and Greenwich. Okay. Whatever. And I use Pollock Page. You can use whatever house system you're used to. I click on include the first thousand asteroids. As always, I encourage you to, to pay Serenu the money if you don't have other ways of doing this or generating it in your own chart. Um, and then you click go. Oh, what happened here? Did it log me out? Let's click go for the thousand. What? Longitude zero is not valid. Oh, this was my bad. This is totally my bad. Zero west zero. Okay. All right. Oh, I need to log in. Let me log in. And then I click on ephemeris. All right. Dang. Okay. Well, let's do it again. The 28th of 8, uh, 1988, 8.38 a.m. Sort by Zodiac 360. All these guys, I use my usual 
asteroids, it was 51 north 30 and 0 west 10. And I'll use my usual public page, include the first thousand, go. All right. Yeah, here we are. Nice. Control. Sh I I highlighted the first one and then Control Shift End, and I copy it, and now we will go to Excel. And this is a blank Excel sheet. I'll just paste this right here. I am not going to need the wheel anymore. Turn off Word Wrap. Make this font much bigger. And uh, let's do a little bit of a little bit of formatting there. Give them some space. All right, cool. Now, next thing I want to do is go to my site. Come to my site, electricmonastery.com. Laurentius 1000 asteroid interpretations are free. 27th July 2021. Come here. And I'm waiting for my website to load. I'm so lazy about this website. I really need somebody to come do it for me because I just, I just, you know, I really, I don't, I don't, I don't like working with web technology. Very, very lazy. Okay, there we are, look at this. We got a table. So let's take this table, Control Shift N, and I'm gonna paste this into another sheet there. Turn off Word Wrap. All right, I think we're in alphabetical order, I think. Oh yes, with interpretations, nice. Okay, select this whole thing I just held down Control Shift and had the arrows there, or you can use it, do it old school. Format as table. Boom. There's a table. It does have headers. So I'm going to leave that checked. Right here. And it's called table one. Nice. Okay, so let's come back over here and do equals V lookup. And we're going to look up this value and it will be in table one there it is table one and what are we trying to return i think we're trying to return the third guy which was the interpretation that's enough hey that's what hersinia does okay and then i can double click this little corner see that see that little anchor there double click boom Ooh, we're quick this is nice I remember yesteryear when this thing took forever and I started recording these videos and I was so I was so dead in those videos. I was it was such poor quality. <laughs> Things have changed over the years. Um, but this is our asteroid interpreter uh, for our this is just for anything. You can do this for anything. But in terms of uh, a synastry chart, a relative chart, I come back to Starfisher and I see that my ascendant should be here in Libra, it's about 11 degrees Libra. Is that where it is? Let's find out. Control F, Ascendant. Hey, look, 11 degrees Libra, that's exactly where it is. These are the asteroids around it, so I'm going to highlight those. Okay, and now let's do the Descendant, House 7. Couldn't find it, because I've got that selected. Unselect it and do it again. Well, these are the ones near house set for the most part. And of course, you can look at the degree and see farther or not. Next, house 10, the midheaven. Here we are. These are the house 10s. Boom. Highlight it. Next, house 4, the all-powerful Imam Coli. Find it. 
These are the ones near the Imam coli, right here. Next, the vertex. The vertex is here. These are the ones near the vertex. There you go. Close that. You will not find the part of fortune from Sierra Nevada, so don't worry about it. You'll just have to look it up in the wheel, find it here. It's very near the vertex, and you can you could look down here. No need, though, in this video because it's pretty self-explanatory. It's somewhere around here, um, a little bit before the vertex. So I guess I could just say, just because, that, and they're all pretty much together, but this one here is the part of fortune. I'm being, I mean, very, very kind of sloppy about this. But there you go. So this is, this is, uh, these are all the axes. And we care in a relative chart about the axes, and we don't care about the planets nearly as much, like the Sun and Mercury and the North Node. I've found that they just don't matter for things that may not even get off the ground. Once they've gotten off the ground and you have an established relationship with that other person or business or whatever, then you start looking at, okay, how are we interacting? What does our Sun say? Um, what is our destiny? Uh, let's look at the North Node, the destiny for this relationship. You can ask those questions after the relationship becomes a thing. But when it's only a twinkle in the eye, truly, all we're looking at are... Let's go into Starfisher. All we're looking at are basically these, the Imam Coli and the Descendant and all that. This is it. This is it. If you're, if you're trying to study relative charts, then this is what matters. Now, of course, it matters that the majors are here on first glance, but what we've just done is go to Sirenu and find out all the asteroids among the first thousand or so at least, which can also be near these things. So, Again, there's not as much point looking at the wheel after you've glanced at it. The wheel tells you if you can expect what you want out of the relationship at a glance, um, especially Juno, Hera, and Bacchus. But, okay, so we've looked at what we want in here, but this here is going to tell us what we're going to get. So I come up here, and I'm going to go to Data, turn on the filter, and let's just click on one of these and filter by color, cell color, yellows. We kept only the yellows. And so the nature of this relationship is going to be indicated here. I see my little border with 11s. And now I can describe what this relationship actually does. Give me a moment, though, because I need to, I need to, uh, make these a little bit more distinguishable for myself. The stuff in Cancer, it's like that. Stuff in Libra, it's stuff in Capricorn, it's like that. Here, okay. And then the part of Fortune was its own kind of, kind of deal. Oh, 21, 20, 29. Uh, let's, let's, they were around each other for the most part. Let's just kind of do it around here. Okay, these are the asteroids that you probably don't have popping up over here. What do they say about the relationship? Um, it says that by default, oh, I told you the most important one is the Imam Coli. When this relationship is on autopilot and nothing is happening, really, then house four is what you care about. So it didn't show up when we didn't display all the asteroids, only the majors over here. But basically, this relationship between these two charts is creative visions, female camaraderie, admired by everyone, celebrated among peers, um, sex. And by the way, where you see sex, it can be exchanged for power as well. I remind you that I did my statistics on people, um, not on abstract concepts, and only on overt 
characteristics, not on internal ones. And so the interpretations are more, um, you know, in some ways they're more animalistic, but, but you can always just substitute out words associated with women. Oh, and when you see the word women, by the way, women is basically the, fem the feminine polarity. These are people who control things or these are energies that control things by defining the rules. Men and masculinity control things by doing stuff. So you've got folks who do stuff, and then you've got folks who write rules for what is done. And they both control systems. When you see women, and you're not looking at actual women, you're looking at relationships and abstract objects like this, think of it as situation defining, using your powers of acknowledgement to say if something is real or not. When you see men, think of the object performs an action. Okay. So here, by default, uh, this relationship is just kind of celebratory by defining things. Let's just say it like that. Uh, when nothing's going on, you can imagine, uh, remember what I said about two guards standing there, right? You could imagine that the two guards are like, look at that guy. You see that guy? You see him walking across the street? You see that guy? He's funny, right? And they're not doing anything. They are defining, right? So that's what the, the women's stuff is, okay? Um, although, again, when I collected my statistics, these values actually came from clusters of women who had Leopoldina on the Midheaven and the North Nodes. So hence the literal word. Okay, it's time for the guards to leave their shift and go do stuff in the world. What do they look like using their ascendant? Well, they spread messages of peace and love, sticking a flower in the bayonet <laughs> or something. Critically appraised. Oh, they're still critical. They seek external support. Hey, we're under attack, that kind of thing. They, they still seem like guards to me. Um, and apparently they're popular. Okay. Um, how are they seen? Uh, draw interests. They have a reputation, voluptuousness. Uh, people may find them sturdy and 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 uh, handsome or or comely, as they they used to say in the what eighteen hundreds. Um, they're like, look at those cars! Wow, wow, you know that kind of thing, because they capture people's attention as they're seen. Um, and how do they respond? They have social intelligence. There's a lot of stuff going on. They see others. Motion's insane casting family to something. Okay, okay. this must be my word mining. Interesting. Related to in-group tension. Queen bee status. Okay, so you get an idea. Oh, and why did the relationship come together in the first place? Apparently somebody was addicted to something. No, I'm just I'm just kidding. That, that Irsa is one of the asteroids of addiction. Um but they are there to, I guess, put on a, a kind of serious comic show. Look at, look at these, right? Giving others hot blood and whatever. Now, I came to the guard story based on what I saw. Oh, in the part of Fortune, this is kind of like background music, but this is the least, this is the weakest of all the, the six points. I came to the guard story because of what I saw initially in this chart. Uh, but, but ultimately... I stuck with the guard story because when you cluster the asteroids around these points, you can tell a holistic story of what the relationship does on autopilot when you're not expecting anything from it. This is it. Relative asteroids, quick and dirty. Um, good luck interpreting your own relationships.